while breaking steel various raw materials such as pig iron steel scrap ferro alloy additions are being used and the steel is made in different furnaces such as open hearth furnace electric arc furnace and induction furnaces in these furnaces where the steel is made the lining of these furnaces are made of refractory so when the steel is made some parts of this refractory material as well as from the pig iron or from the initial input they remain in the steel later on this steel is again refined using various techniques but still some of the parts are still left those things which are left in this like sulfides oxides silicates alumina and parts of refractory also they remain in the steel these inclusions are called non metallic inclusions and they are very harmful in certain cases because they create a gap between the steel matrix and whenever some pressure is used then the crack may initiate from that particular area so these are very harmful so one has to take care of that so how to determine that what level of these type of inclusions are acceptable to us so for this particular case i am presenting this particular video wherein i have defined about different types of uh, inclusions and how the level of oxygen level of uh, inclusions are determined using technique of metallographic micrographic examination so without wasting your time let me start this program on how to determine non metallic inclusion in steel but after a break welcome on my channel jagdish shobe this particular video as told in the intro of this video is on determination of non metallic inclusion in steel it's a part 5 of metallurgical quality control series 2 so let's see what it contains before going into the contents the flashback is there already i have made four videos germany hardenability test part 1 part 2 erection cupping test part 3 charpy impact test and part 4 iod impact test so if you have not seen these videos i request you to go through each videos and see at full length then only you can gain something out of these videos very useful videos so you must see them also so the point was what is this video going to cover so the first is purpose then test equipment or material test method procedures precautions problems and their possible solution so i'll be covering this video based on these topics okay so first of all what is the purpose why you are going to determine this level of inclusion level of steel the purpose of determining the inclusion rating of steel is to know how much steel is clean basically these non metallic inclusions are creating problems and they are called to be a dirty particles so these are to be seen that whether the steel is totally clean or not it determines the level of inclusion in steel with this method you determine what is the level of inclusion in the steel so first type of inclusion there are two types macro and micro in macro there are refractory inclusions you see you can see it and there are compound inclusions also complex type of inclusion of various material and in the micro it is very fine sulfide oxides alumina all these inclusions are there which you can see very well here okay it's a clear cut this is a micro this is a micro what i am going to cover in this is basically this micro inclusions okay i am not going to cover because these are non acceptable at any cost this will be not acceptable but in this case some of the parts some of the levels are acceptable some of the levels are not acceptable so this i am going to cover in this particular video okay 
So whatever the equipment or material are being used in this preparation of the sample is, you have, you can see this uh, metallurgical microscope is there. Then this cutting machines, two types of cutting machines. Then uh, this mounting machine and this is a uh, mounted piece where in this bakelite and these are the uh, steel samples actually mount. Then after that there is a endless belt grinder where this is the ground. Then this is emery paper grinding at different grades. And then this is a manual polishing and then this is a mechanized automation polishing. Okay. So these are various raw materials are being used. This you can refer in part 7 of MQC1 also where I have explained in detail about this sample preparation techniques and all those things. So let's go further. So test method and procedures. So <coughs> there are two types. <coughs> Micrographic method. It is basically for BS. IS is 4163-1982 is the Indian standard. And for macroscopic it is BSIS 10138-1992. So you can refer this standard in detail. But as I told you in the beginning, that I will not be covering this. Okay, I will be covering only this part. So you go through this uh, standard if you want to know in detail. Okay, so that is the thing. What, what is this micrographic method? First of all, you have to prepare a test piece. You can see the various diameters are there of raw material. One is this less than 25, the other one is more than 25, and this is one is more than 25 but less than 40 millimeter. Okay. So in this case, we see that sample, how the sample is taken. This is the technique where this sample is being taken here. It is cut from here. And the polished surface is the hatch line basically, which is being marked here. Okay. So this is the polished surface which is should be basically per, along with the rolling direction. This is the rolling direction. So you have to see this direction only. If you will see the across, then you will not find the correct inclusion because some of the inclusions are cut, longitudinal are cut and they appear as a dot. So you can interpret differently. In this case, if it is more than 25 but less than 40, you see this is a kind of, it has, it has to go up to the center from this end to this end and again the pulsing surface is this only, parallel to the rolling direction. And the third case where this diameter is more than or equal to 40 millimeter, here we have to take like this, we have to leave something here and from center this distance and from edge it is this distance and you have to take out the piece like this. But in all the three cases, the polishing surface which you are going to examine, it remains in the same direction that is parallel to the rolling direction. So procedure is sample preparation procedure, same thing. First of all cutting, then belt grinding, emery paper grinding, then mounting, then diamond polishing. Instead of uh, Alumina paste, we are using diamond paste here and then micro examination at magnification of 100. It is generally examined on 100 magnification and in unetched condition, it is not to be etched. Okay, so for this also if you want to see, you go to the slide number 5, I have already explained these things, uh, nothing to remain to explain you much on this particular slide. Now how do you assess? Assessment of inclusion rating using a JK chart. This chart is famous chart. This is used for comparison of various types of inclusion when you see under microscope. So this chart, let me explain this chart. This A and B are the types of inclusion. A is basically sulphide. B is alumina. And within this there are two categories, thin and thick series. And again there are levels 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Similarly in B also, same thing, thin and thick and level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. As this level goes on increasing, the seriousness increases. So you have to check whether it comes to under what particular level. Okay. 
then it is sulfide alumina then it comes silicate silicate the same thing thin and thick series and the last one is oxide inclusion this is again thin and thick so in all these four cases there are different levels are there and as the level increases the seriousness increases means inclusion content increases which is not desired for your uh, information i have also mentioned thick and thin series what could be the size of that uh, inclusion thin and thick different a b c d all these i have mentioned in this case when you are examining under microscope in unaged condition then you have to compare with this chart whenever you see it and you have to see the most dirty part wherever the inclusion content is high you don't have to see a very clean area you have to see whether this it is on the higher side and then you compare with this chart under what system it falls so how it is represented it is represented as i have marked here in blue background a2 b2 e c1 d2 it means what it means a1 means a2 means it is sulfide inclusion falling under 2 but it is thin series okay b2 e b2 is alumina inclusion and again it is 2 but it is falling under thick condition e is for thickness if the thickness is more than it is e okay then c it is a silicate inclusion and this is falling under only one level this level okay and d it is oxide and it is falling under thin series but the level is 2 so this way this explanation is there how to represent inclusion content in the steel and to what extent generally it is acceptable in this case in general up to 3 maximum up to 3 level whether it is thin or thick it is acceptable but in case of clean steel good clean steel nowadays because of technological development in the steel making they generally remain up to 2 uh, two is maximum and thin also is there so because of uh, technological innovation steel is now coming quite clean neat and clean where in our days when we were doing these things it was sometime falling 3 sometime falling 4 so we have to examine very carefully that whether it will be acceptable or not and these particular things are now made very easy if you use software now all those uh, manufacturers of this microscopes and all those thing metallographic instrument they are also making software and there is when you use software you can directly calculate it gives you directly what is the content of uh, inclusion content of steel different type of inclusion so nowadays things have been made very simple and there is no confusion about whether it is silicate or whether it is sulfide because you can read through software and it gives a clear cut solution to your inclusion rating for your information the comparison chart was not very clear so i have defined it here again sulfide how it looks this is a type see these are the sulfide nature longitudinal direction in the rolling direction it will remain here like this okay and it will have a gray color whether you unfocus or focus it will have a gray color here in between this is alumina b type this is uh, you see the shape of this slightly rosette type okay maybe thin or thick but it appears like this silicate it is i have given two photographs one is this tail type and the other one is having this spots white spots it is difficult to differentiate between sulfide and silicate most of the cases it is very difficult so i am just telling you that how to differentiate is when you are saying this and you find this is a longitudinal one then you have to focus on focus and if you find some glossy marks shining particles or something so it should be basically silicate or the other identification is they will have a tail mark like this this is a tail if there is a tail and there is a shining mark is there so it is definitely a silicate otherwise in case of sulfide it will remain as a simple this type of so now it's clear that whenever you have to differentiate you can differentiate sulfide and silicate with these photographs 
oxide it is very easy because they are generally round shape globular shape see this one two three four like this okay so it is easy to identify oxide and alumina but sometimes it is difficult to differentiate silicate and sulfide and silicate but i have told you the reason how you can differentiate between these two inclusions now what is the precautions to be taken during this examination test piece must be cut as illustrated in slide number 7 for different sizes of raw material this i have already explained you earlier go to slide number 7 to see this then the polish surface must be parallel to rolling direction otherwise wrong assessment the polish surface has to be in the parallel to the rolling direction otherwise if you cut like sulfide inclusion it is a longitudinal when you cut across then you see dot and dot becomes oxide so sometimes you confuse whether it is oxide or it is sulfide so always it has to be checked with longitudinal direction in the rolling direction then diamond paste must be used in cleaning for better observation instead of alumina paste you have to use diamond paste for better observation because polishing has to be utmost it must have be a good polishing so that you can see your face also in that particular polish paste there should not be any scratch or grinding marks okay the sufficient coolant should be used during cutting to avoid any burning this is a primary requirement of cutting that you have to use sufficient coolant so that it doesn't get burned okay then check the wash field in the test piece for reporting levels of inclusion yes this i have also explained earlier that whenever you are seeing three four areas pick up that area which has got uh, maximum level means extreme cases has to be checked not that where there, there is no inclusion you are checking that area so wherever there is a wash field that you have to examine and that you have to report that what is the inclusion rating of that particular area or that particular steel then ensure mirror like polish surface free of any scratch or grinding marks this i have also explained in diamond paste application okay so whenever you are polishing it you have to cook and sure that there should not be any scratch mark or grinding mark okay and it has to be checked in unaged condition okay there should not be any etching what are the problems and their possible solutions the first of all the inclusion are not visible this is a general problem and the main thing related to this is your sample preparation from cutting grinding polishing and everything if, if things are done in good manner then you will find a very good surface and particularly using diamond paste and the second one is difficult to differentiate which i have already explained if comparison with jk chart is not clear then use software for inclusion rating otherwise it will be difficult to compare with jk chart particularly sulfide and silicate inclusion so go through nowadays the softwares are available very easy for a metallurgist otherwise there used to be a hot discussion between metallurgists regarding this what type of inclusion is this okay so this in this video i have explained you most of the thing like type of inclusion how they are determined how, how samples are to be made test pieces are to be made how it is to be checked in honest condition under what condition it has to be checked and then what Uh, precautions you have to take during this examination i hope that this will be quite useful to all of you who are involved in this activity and you will certainly like this uh, video if you like it then please like it give your comments and subscribe it also when you are new to this channel and if possible you also share with your uh, friends and whatsapp groups So thanks for your patience of listening this video and wait for the next part that is part 6 on austenite grain size wherein I'll be taking out uh, austenite grain size how to determine austenite grain size of a steel which is again a very important part so thank you thank you very much thanks a lot